South Carolina man tossed expletives around while refusing to remove his Let's Go Brandon hat inside a polling location in Orangeburg. After being told he had to follow the law or not vote, he threw his hat off and proceeded to poke one of the poll workers in the face, resulting in that fight. I just want to share my experience with you in North Carolina at my early voter station. So I pulled up and there's a couple stands outside and one of them was calling me over. It was four elderly men. Um, I didn't know, again, like I've never voted here before. I'm from California, didn't know. So they're calling me over saying, are you here to vote? I said, yeah. And they said, okay, right this way. So I'm standing there and they were like asking me for my ID. It seemed like I was supposed to like check in with them there. So they're going through, they asked for my ID. They wanted to see if I had my voter registration card with me which I did, I was pulling them all out and they said, okay. And they were looking at them and they were like, great. So here is your sample ballot. And all of a sudden I looked at the one man's hat and it had a Trump um, sign on his hat. And I'm looking at the other men's and there's no sign of Trumping anywhere other than this guy's hat. And then he says, here's your sample ballot. Just make sure that you vote for everything that's circled on this ballot. And I'm looking at the valid ballot and Every single one was the Republican candidate, including Donald Trump for president. And then at the top, it said conservative sample ballot. And then it hit me. This is not where I was supposed to be. So what did I do? I immediately, one, took his little piece of paper, shredded it in front of their face, laughed in their face, and then said, actually, I'm not a conservative. I don't need this. Thank you. I'm a woman. I know who I'm voting for. And this woman in North Carolina had her own voting horror story. After these guys illegally tried to trick her into voting for their conservative choices, her outright rejection triggered them to think of their past rejections that they must have gone through. So then they got mad. As I'm walking away to go stand in line, these men, four men, start harassing me, telling me I need Jesus telling me that I won't have the right to vote in this country unless I start bearing children. And then they start telling me the worst of all, I hope you bear your child, whether it's at your will or not. They start like literally yelling this at me as I'm standing in line. Now, her story is obviously her side of the alleged interaction with these guys attempting to fool people into somehow forgetting who they plan to vote for. So you can take it or leave it. But this kind of aggressive behavior is getting more and more prevalent. Today at 4 p.m., our patrol officers responded to an armed person with a machete call at the Beaches Branch Library, which serves as an early voting precinct at the beach. The units arrived and found eight young males, seven of which were juveniles and one adult male, inside the parking lot of the polling location. The investigation revealed that the group arrived to protest and antagonize the opposing political side. The group then approached sign waivers along State Road A1A and escalated into a verbal disturbance. 
That then escalated to the point where the sole adult male of the group, Caleb James Williams, he's 18 years of age of Neptune Beach, brandished a machete in an aggressive, threatening posture over his head. We have a picture of that that we'll disperse to the media as well. Mr. Williams decided to brandish that machete over his head at two female victims, ages 71 and 54 years of age, which were in fear at the, that point, had called the police, and we arrived less than one minute later. Mr. Williams was arrested for aggravated assault on person 65 years of age or older and improper exhibition of a firearm or dangerous weapon. And I can share with you Mr. Williams' booking photo as well, which we'll make public to you as well. The group was there for no other reason but for ill intentions to cause a disturbance. This is not an incident of solely a First Amendment protected right, but rather one where they were simply there to cause a ruckus. We've gone from poking polling workers in the face for doing their jobs to harassing women that refused to vote the way several angry men wanted her to, to an 18-year-old guy leading a gang of juveniles to cause chaos while brandishing a machete at elderly women hoping to vote. But I got one more story out of Texas. Last night at about 6.30, almost 6.30, on the, on the west side of town, uh, at one of the polling sites, a man entered, uh, a couple entered uh, the polling place, and the man, uh, the, the man of the couple was wearing a hat that, that uh, supported a, a political candidate. Uh, he was advised by the uh, early voting clerk that he was not allowed to wear that hat while voting because, it's, again, it goes against the, the, the laws of, uh, of you know, electioneering. Uh, the man complied. My understanding that the, the man complied at that point. He took the hat off. I'm not sure what he did, to, if he hid it from view or whatever, but he did take it off. He did comply uh, and voted. On his way out of the polling site, though, it appears that he put the hat back on and while still in the building. Uh, the early voting clerk then informed him that that was unacceptable and then began to escort the, the, the person out. The suspect uh, appeared to throw uh, an arm back toward the victim. Uh, the victim was, I, I, can't, I couldn't tell by, from what I saw if, if it connected, uh, but then the, the victim seemed to push off of the suspect at that point. The suspect then turned and threw several punches right at the face of the, the victim. Uh, the victim in the case is an elderly man, 69 years of age, uh, doing his job. He's, he was, he's an uh, uh, early voting clerk. The deputies then at that point uh, brought the, the suspect downtown. He was questioned and then he ended up being booked for injury to an elderly uh, person, uh, which is uh, a, a felony, felony charge. So this thug, Jesse Lutzenberger, is the culprit that felt the need to begin his quest to catch up to Donald Trump's 34 felony convictions with one of his own. This increase in violence and harassment at polling sites might have something to do with folks that have been ramped up to treat our elections like a rival football game where they're wearing hats and t-shirts for their team. Now, whether they've been convinced that their vote has been watered down or stolen by Democrats, or that it'd be fun to harass and threaten others exercising their right to vote, or that they need to break the law by wearing MAGA gear, the chaos, violence, and confusion is exactly what their leader wants. So if you have a mail-in ballot, get that damn ballot in please immediately because... Because they've already started cheating in Lancaster, they've cheated. We caught it with 2,600 votes. Trump's claim of 2,600 fraudulent votes in Pennsylvania is far from the truth, but that never stopped him from using this story to stoke doubt in our system. Officials in the Commonwealth have stated that they're investigating questionable voter registration forms, not votes or ballots. None of the forms have resulted in any voting because they weren't processed, and the source of many of them were from nonpartisan voter registration organizations. And at the end of it all, officials confirmed that due to the already established checks and balances to confirm and then reconfirm registrations, no fraudulent balance have been cast. So in other words, attempts are made for various reasons, like monetary incentives for workers within some of these organizations, but almost never come to fruition because they just don't accept everything without checking. 
But, you know, rather than to read about this like I did, it's easier and more politically divisive to just say they were caught cheating with 2,600 votes. 